Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at the Metro Y 3D Scanner from RevoPoint. So this is the Metro Y, the successor to the Metro X, though starting this far through the alphabet doesn't really give RevoPoint that much room for future model names. So good luck to the advertising guys over there. But we've got a number of improvements over the Metro X, I'll cover that in a little bit. And you've probably already seen quite a few videos of this scanning various different items. Now RevoPoint do state that you should be able to scan relatively small things here, so as small as 5 centimeters. So I thought I'd give that a go, seeing as I haven't seen any videos covering it. And we can see how crisp and detailed this actually turns out. So we're going to be scanning this, and while it is over 5 centimeters in size, it's also got some pretty skinny parts in these legs. Now I've already added on some of the markers that we're going to need to use, and because it's a small model, I'm just going to put these markers on the surface, which is perfectly acceptable to do and a really good solution when scanning something small. Now what I thought I'd focus on here is that there are a couple of different scanning modes that you can use with the Metro Y, and there's even more with the Pro. So the crossline mode is meant for general detail and should give you the fastest scans, as it's covering the most area repeatedly as quickly as possible. Then parallel mode should give you a bit more detail and potentially crispness at the slight expense of speed. And finally there's the single line scanning which is designed for capturing areas that have got greater depth to them that otherwise you can't really easily reach. There are also settings to allow you to scan dark or shiny surfaces like metal which you can't do with a lot of other non laser line scanners. But we're not going to really need them for this project. So once you're set up you just click start scanning and you're ready to go. Now while this is showing on the laptop, I think it's going to be easier if I put a screen grab in the corner, just so you can see what we're doing. I have got a more detailed video on using the RevoPoint software, and it is really nice to use. In this instance for the laser line scanners, it's very clear on the way it works. You just keep scanning, slowly going backwards and forwards, and it's going to measure the markers, and you'll notice it turning from an orange to a yellow, and then eventually it turns to a green. And you want everything that you're interested in to be green, as it means it's got an appropriate level of detail. Now I did set this in a mode where it's going to try and capture as much detail as possible, as accurately as possible, so this is going to be a bit slower, but you can see we're already very quickly turning to this sort of greeny shade on the bits that I've gone over a couple of times, and that's because this is the cross line scanning which is going to be more quick. I think it's probably worth mentioning as well that while I'm doing this with the base set, you can also get a mobile kit as well, which allows you to connect this to a small handle, and then you can connect your phone to it, and you can see what you're scanning on your phone, making it easier if you don't have an object that you can scan right next to your computer or laptop. And on the Pro version, you can also use this turntable mode, which can help if it's not easy to move yourself all the way around the object you're scanning. At this point I'll speed this up as I don't think you need to see me scanning this all in real time, but you get an idea of what we're doing. The important bit here is that you need to make sure that you're seeing five of those marker dots at the same time, otherwise it will lose tracking. And just to make sure that I've got five in view at all times, I've put them closer than you're recommended to need to do. They say about five to six centimetres apart should normally be fine for a larger object, but this isn't a larger object obviously. You do get quite a few of these markers in with the scanner. I think you get like five or six sheets, but this is an expendable that you do need to know you're probably gonna to need to get more of at some point in the future. So do bear that in mind. Again, the full field view that comes with the pro version doesn't need any markers at all. So there's definitely a benefit to having that mode available as well. Now at this point I've paused this and there's a button to do that right at the top of the scanner which is really nice and you can start it up again from there as well and I'm just having a look around to check that all of the bits I'm interested in I've got enough detail for. Now for this I'm mostly interested in the top surface, I'm going to be designing something to connect these two areas but it's nice to have a little bit of side detail but I'm not particularly interested in it so I'm happy with this and we'll leave it there. So this is what we come out with and this is the point cloud, if we zoom in you can see each of these individual dots. And actually we've got quite a lot of detail here, even capturing things through this hole, which is good considering that the cross line is meant to be the least detailed for that. We do have a one click mode available, I'm not going to use that, but actually it is fairly good. What I'm going to do is make sure this fusing method is high quality fusion, which is going to take longer, but it's going to give us more detail, which is exactly what we want. And I'm going to click to remove the markers, and that will basically delete these and put holes in its place. And that's fine because it's on a flat surface. Now I will say, speaking of flat surfaces, you can sort of see that there's a slight catch here where you've got the very black 
and the very white lines. And that's, again, understandable for a 3D scanner, and you get that with most scanners. You want a relatively similar coloured surface. And actually, the fact that these are about as extreme differences in colour as possible, and they've still come out fairly faint, is pretty good. I just advise to not go around 3D scanning any zebra. So I'm going to click Apply, and we'll just go through this process. Anything that takes longer than a couple of seconds, I'll speed up and just let you know how long it took at the end. Okay, so that took a total of two minutes and six seconds. And I'm pretty impressed with this. We've got a very nice mesh. In fact, a really good mesh. It's pretty sharp. Now, we have got some things we can do. For example, I'm going to isolate all of the loose dots. This helps get rid of any minor points where you might have overlapped something or just been going a bit too quick. So we'll just apply that. That was in real time, so it was pretty fast. And then we can also do the same thing with overlapping. And you can fiddle around with these settings. I'm not going to bother with that, and it's still working out pretty great. You can see we've moved those markers where we've got holes now. Not that, that matters for this, but that will get turned into a flat surface when we decide to fill in holes, which is at a later section. So it's important that these markers get placed on flat surfaces if you're placing them on top of the thing that you're actually scanning. So just bear that in mind. Now we've got some really good detail here. We sort of missed some of these corners. Again, I was focusing on scanning from above, so that's sort of understandable. If I'd have come round to sort of here, we probably wouldn't have had an issue with that. So just bear that in mind. But from above, didn't get all of those tight corners perfectly. But for the bit that we cared about just here and here, we did. We got everything that we wanted. So that's great. And we've got this corner just here, which is the important bit as well. So you can see at the moment, this is still dot-based data. This is not yet a mesh. This is the point cloud. We can do things like smoothing things out, which is interesting. I'm going to show you this, but I'm not going to use it. We also have this simplify mode, and this is great. So I'm just going to zoom in here, and you can see we've got loads and loads of dots, loads of points on all of these surfaces, including the flat ones. Now, if I go to uniform, this will get rid of some of these dots everywhere. But if you go to geometric, what's really clever about this is it will recognize where you've got more detail that's changing. For example, on these corner points that are slightly beveled, then it will recognize that and keep more dots there. Whereas on the flat surface, it will get rid of them. If we just click the geometric and apply, you'll see what I mean by this. And it doesn't take that long to do it. Now, there we go. So you can still see we've got all of these dots on the bits that matter, but much less on the flat surfaces. Now, I'm going to control and Z to undo that, just so that we're keeping all of the data. But that is really good for getting rid of this slightly, in fact, let's go to the mesh and do this, but we'll get a possibly slightly grainy surface, just because this is so small, the thing that we're scanning. And actually, that simplify would get rid of that. But again, I want to show you everything raw, so that you get an idea of just what this is doing. Now, I'm going to leave my grid quality as the highest quality with a high quality mesh. It's automatically set it to that, I think based on the fact that I did a high quality fusion. And we'll click apply, and again, we'll see how long it's going to take. It says six minutes, but I would be surprised if it's that long. Okay, so that actually took two minutes and 24 seconds. But I should mention that I'm off my laptop now, and my computer is pretty decent in terms of specs. So six minutes is probably the average that it would take a normal computer. So again, we can see all the detailing here, and this is really quite nice. Considering this is meant to be the less detailed version, these are very crisp edges, and we've got everything that I want in terms of, like, even this detailing here, I don't need that. But this is really, really good. And we can see all of the panel lining, and this piston has come out great. So yeah, really happy with this. Now I'm just going to quickly do the last isolation, we do it in this mode as well, and I could do fill holes, but it's not really relevant for what I'm doing, but that would fill in these holes really nicely. We could also get rid of any of this bottom bit here, for example you've got your lasso tool, I could just get rid of all of this if I needed to, something like that. Now I'm just going to undo that, because I'm just going to leave it as it is, as mentioned, and I can get rid of this when I'm editing it in Blender, but this would be perfectly acceptable to do it that way, we could just come to a side on view and then do that. So no problem with that if we chose to do it in the Revo Point software. So what I'll do is export this just as the mesh model, and then I'm going to do this in the parallel line mode and see how this compares. 
So as mentioned earlier, this should be better at getting deeper detail and a little bit crisper. I'm going to speed through this and I am showing it all, even if it's fast, just because otherwise I always get some comment in the comment section of someone saying that I haven't actually scanned it in the same way. And I want you to see that I'm basically doing about the same amount of scanning. I didn't time this or anything, but I'm doing the same idea of going over the top and then doing a little bit at a slight side angle, but not too much. While this is going on, I thought I'd just mention how the Metro Y compares to the Metro X. Because in theory and detail, there's not actually much difference here. They both have the same sort of precision and accuracy. So what's the point? What's the difference? Well, the main difference is the number of laser lines. The Metro X only had 14, whereas the Metro Y has 30 and the Pro has 34. That should make no difference in the amount of detail you're going to get from your scans. So if you've got a Metro X, there's no point getting annoyed and throwing it out the window. All it's doing is meaning that the Metro Y is going to come up with those results faster. It's going to take less time to scan. So if you've already got a Metro X, you need to decide whether that's worth it or if you care. I actually think this is smaller as well, though I don't have my Metro X on me, but I'm pretty sure it's smaller and a bit less heavy. So there is that too. But if you have the choice of where to begin with and you've got neither of them, I would say the Metro Y is definitely more bang for your bucks. But the Metro X is still available if you want something cheaper. It's just not going to be as nice or as quick to use. So here's the results in Blender and we can see them side by side. And regardless of the type of mode you use, the answer to the thumbnail question, can you get enough detail to scan small models, is definitely yes. So here we've got the crossline version and here is the parallel line scan. And these were processed in exactly the same way with the one exception that here I forgot to get rid of the markers, but that should make no difference at all. And actually we've got very little difference here. Let's just move this across a little bit. But these both look like absolutely superb scans. I mean, the size of these are really, really small and we're getting a lot of detail, even down to these rivets and all of the panel lining on both of them is really solid. Though I would say the parallel line mode is living up to the reputation. I think these are just a little bit crisper than those panel lines. You can see there's just a little bit more depth. So really, really interesting. Let's just bring this over. And I would say, I do think this corner, this edge here, let's just click off so it's easier to see, is a little bit crisper as well than this one, but there's barely anything in it. Yeah, I think we've got, so just to be clear, because they're crossing over one another, here, this is the parallel line one, and you can see it's just got slightly more consistent results here on this deep panel. Yeah, and actually here, look, just a tiny little bit more fuzzy than this one. Though, just to be clear about this, these are tiny in scale. This is like, there we go, five, nearly six millimeters in size. So these are minute, and these rivets are like 0 0.8 millimeters in size. So either way, we've got great scans from both of them. It just depends on if you want to spend a little bit more time to get slightly crisper detail. But just for emphasis, this is the same scanner. You can just choose which mode is right for you, speed or slightly crisper crisper detail, but I think these have turned out great. So I've just removed the base here, this is using a simple boolean, but I just wanted to show you what would be next in this project and why this is so helpful. So I wanted to add something to this section here, and for that I need these accurate scans and measurements. It's going to make my life a lot easier. From here, I can start doing things like just noting down the individual corner points, so somewhere about there. Notice I'm not doing this particularly accurately, I'd actually zoom in to do this really correctly. And we can do this on both sides. And then from this point on, that's going to allow me to start generating some surfaces or some objects to fit into this gap. So I can start doing there, there, we'll just go here, and then here, here, and then, and then there. And then now I've got this that's going to fill in that space. Now again, not perfectly accurate, in reality, I need to come to that corner a little bit more. I could actually edit this and just start putting it in place. So we'll get something that's dead on correct once we've had a bit of time to fill around with this. But either way, you can see how easy it is to then get this object. And then from this point, we could start just modeling this out. And we've got a solid box, and that's gonna be our 3D printable object. And then we can start adding our detail from there. So these scanners are amazing when you want to reverse engineer parts or add things to them and specific models. Honestly, they really saved me a huge amount of time in my modeling workflow, because this is what I do a lot of. So this was a similar project on the same piece where I was making shorter legs, and you can see how perfect this fit is, 
based on that 3D scan data that I got with the Metro Y. Now do let me know in the comments section if you wanna see more with the Metro Y, if you do wanna see any big scans or things like that, I do actually have a project or two lined up that's gonna involve some 3D scanning, and I think I'll probably record that and show the whole process of using a scanner to create some sort of end product. If you are interested in the Metro Y or the Metro Y Pro, there is a link in the description and it is an affiliate link, which means it costs you no extra to use, but some money goes to the channel to help keep making these videos. In fact, it's actually gonna save you money because there's a discount code there to get you a little bit of extra money off. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.